Hi, welcome to the behind the scenes of DM Outpost, or as I call it, SCUG, which is, stands for StarCraft and Real Ghost, which at the time I think uh, StarCraft Ghost had uh, been canceled or put on hold. And basically what I wanted to try to do was take the concept of the Unreal Ghost, StarCraft Ghost multiplayer, and put it inside Unreal. It should have really just showed up my level design skills, building levels and building basic groups, but I ended up trying to make it into a whole game and try to make it work. I ultimately got wrapped up in uh, trying to look through all the Unreal Tournament asset packs so I the less stuff I'd have to build. I think I only ended up making maybe like two textures. One was like the hazard, the black and yellow tape, and I think one was surprisingly Unreal Tournament 3 didn't have lava, a lava texture. But it really didn't show, or it wasn't really very attractive, the the like use whenever I use like BSP brushes. It just ends up looking so boxy and I don't know, just unappealing. A lot of this I think I even like got rescaled a bunch. Like, I think these what I would call speakers are actually like thrusters. And then there's all kinds of issues like I don't know, after three years I just kinda wanted to be done with it. Like I had it all like textured properly, then all of a sudden something went wrong. Just kinda said screw it. Also, there's some things that don't make sense, like why is there like wind on this supposedly asteroid? But uh, yeah, I should probably quit ramming and let's kind of go through in like an overview of like the basics of what I was thinking. At first, this ship would land, this ship would land, uh, dropping off the player, and then I discovered that the the cargo lift that was supposed to move up and down to like unload cargo, like if it's big and it can't go through like the tunnel underground doesn't work and so they go through go down and uh, meet the CV down here there we go and you can see some pathlining and really this is kind of uninspiring I just kind of put some crates and stuff in the way just to make it interesting and then I wanted to act like the player was a new recruit like as a space marine and then I'd give them a weapon but then I ran into issues where they would like shoot at the just keep shooting or where I would just keep shooting at the SCV little robot guy and I was like, well, I mean, you're just going to have to lock it like they're not ready to use it. They can have it, though. I remember pathfinding for the robot was pretty interesting because with the elevator, it, uh, because the the platform's not always there, it had to, I had to, like, force it to go to path nodes because it wouldn't, it can't connect there because it wasn't a, like, a solid object. And I just kind of made a basic story, like, you know, you're a new recruit, the CV's or SCV is going to show you around, kind of do like a basic tour, you know, and it shows you the ropes and everything. I think one of the first things I decided was to do a little bit like interaction was to, you know, just escort the SCV over there to fix the cargo and show like a little animation. Just continue on the tour. Basically, it was to, like, this wouldn't make sense, like, realistically, like, why wouldn't you just have the anti-aircraft turret always on? But I just decided to have the player turn it on, and then I think uh, some alarm sound, and they want you to go to this bunker. And then uh, basically once the player's inside the bunker, then the enemy ship shows up, sort of like uncloaks. And then it uh, spawns on, I think, uh, was it four players or enemies? And then basically you kill all that, and that was the end of the level. And then I decided while I was playing, you know, just to be like, you know, roll in credits after you killed the guys, I was like... You know, I'd I'd spent all this time putting in like these uh ambient animations or sequences. Like there's one little SCV that it'll go to the command center and then come out here and grab some of this gas and then eventually it'll respawn and it'll keep grabbing it. Same with the crystals, it'll actually uh it'll actually come out here and I think there's a couple it's not entirely random, but there's a few that it'll go to. And basically, it'll play a little cutting animation, and then the crystals will scale down. And then it'll put it on its head like it's carrying it. And then I think after a period of time, they'll kind of they'll reappear, and then they'll expand back to a regular size. But I mean, as far as like other animations, I think I have the stars rotating. The I think the does that rotate? Yeah, there we go. And then I have some asteroids going around. We got some fog. Sometimes it's kind of weird to watch because the asteroids will, I think, like clip behind stuff weird. Plus, as I got kind of a little shine to them, looks looks kind of weird. Oh, I thought this rotates. Is it not playing the editor? I guess I'll turn it back on real quick just to, like, I just put like, I don't know. It's kind of hard because I just saw. I, I think I only worked off a really like 
what I saw of some of the gameplay that they'd showed off. And then obviously I haven't played StarCraft. But I just like fit basic like concept stuff. Like here would be like a area of crystals and then here would be a gas deposit. And then, you know, the idea would be that, you know, depending on the map, they'd be scattered out and you'd have to like play something on them or have the SCV go gather them. There's a bunch of stuff that I really shouldn't have spent so much time on. Like I had a heck of a time trying to like block out this command center because all I had like I didn't know how the inside of it looked so I just kind of guessed and that kind of shaped the outside or try to keep that and then another issue I had with uh, what was the bunker like I didn't I you know usually I think of the game like they just walk into it and they're in there but I was trying to figure out how you could like quickly uh, walk into the bunker and have some protection which I I'm still impressed by kind of how I figured it out but you know it's still kind of janky like Especially, it doesn't really work, like, if you had multiplayer people. Because, you know, if somebody's walking in there and walking out, then the other person's exposed. Then you know, they, somebody just throws a grenade in there and you're dead. Like I said, though, I think my biggest problem was that I took too many breaks because I got stuck on the, like, the kismet or programming. Which I'll hopefully go through in a little bit. But just trying to, I, sh I should have just kept making the level and just do basic scripting later instead of being like oh i'm gonna make this a big thing and i got to the point where i got pretty good like towards the end of like keeping track of bugs and what i need to fix but i did rush at the end and i i think about a week ago i did get it where it would play within the game which i don't know why i never got it back then but whatever because i think like if i install it i think you have to use just play it in the editor and at one time i i had the uh, somebody had made a Space Marine model, and I had the actual Space Marine models, and I think I had an assault rifle that kind of looked like the gun from StarCraft that they, the Space Marines carry. But I, I never could get that to work. I think it was a problem with because it was considered a mod, and you got to, like, cook it for final release. And I never did figure that out, or there was something wrong. But I guess uh, we can do a little bit more. Like, as you can see, this is just, like, a big, like, just a sheet of terrain. It's nothing fancy, and I just pulled over the side. Originally, it was just a whole landmass, like, from the concept art, but I was like, man, I need a way to keep players in, and, you know, usually falling off the edge of space will keep most people in, I think. Because ultimately, what I should have done is I should have put, like, kill volumes along the edge, just in case, because, I mean, you could literally jump off, and then you're falling forever. Although, are these soft kill volumes? Oh, that is a- oh, so there's a kill volume if you fall in the trench. I don't even think it goes- oh, it doesn't even go all the way through the trench. Yeah, there's a lava volume. Yeah, but I should have, like, boxed it in just in case, you know, somebody gets, you know, gets up here and then jumps off. You know, otherwise you're just falling. Alright, let's see. Where's Kismet? Oh, we'll go through some of the level stuff. Oh, here's all the AI stuff. Let's see, what does this say? Get distance between SCV and player. Oh, I basically made it so, like, the SCV, like, if it, uh, basically it has a set path. As you, like, do tasks, then it moves on. But it also, it'll stop in between those, uh, those, uh, tasks or whatever if you get too far away. What was the crystal? Oh my god. <laughs> what does this say? Spawn SCV, set god mode so player cannot kill it. Yeah, that was another big thing, because I would just sit there, like, kill him. And then it was like, it would just kind of broke the whole my whole game mode and then uh let's see attach spark emitter and then i think initially we hide it until it needs to play the the particle animation and then move to a random path node by a crystal and then i think it keeps looping through that which i mean i think i i got it down good but if you ever wanted to set up like where it was procedural or random or dynamic or something this would have to be all redone i think the gas is the same way right yeah it basically does the same thing only it doesn't like look through random it just goes to the same spot i probably actually done this one first i think i had problems though because like whenever the gas is in the container it animates so it looks like it's like a liquid like floating in the air moving i'm just gonna look at one of these enemy ai yeah this was just simple check distance from enemy to player if players in range move closer if enemies in range start firing short bursts and loop back through Oh, I think these are just animation. Oh, yeah, those are just animation sequences, like, for the doors to open. Player spawn. What does this do? So we spawn the player. Yeah, I, I just end up didn't care. Like, 
while I was testing, I'm like, let's put God Mode on if an ammo. And then I, I had to make sure the player didn't have any weapon to start. Yeah, because the initial spawn point, the elevator wouldn't have been down, and I would have had to reset it or, like, check to see, like, where the player was at. And so that's why I just made a, like, a disabled spawn, and then they spawn at the command center. Although that wouldn't have mattered because they wouldn't have died because God Mode was on. So it's kind of didn't make any sense. Oh, boy. The elevator goes to a specific floor based on the flow of the story. So if a player uses the elevator out of order, then it will break the story. <laughs> I use the dynamic trigger. Oh, oh yeah, because the dynamic trigger, it has to be able to move, so it's actually part of the elevator. Uh, so the player can jump on without detaching from the actor, thus stopping the actor. Oh, because I think, like, um, like an actor would be, like, the base of the floor, and I think what I did figured out was, uh, if the elevator's moving and the player jumps, the player is no longer touching that actor, so it stops at it. So that's why I, I made the whole space... Where as long as they were in that space, it moved because it was acted weird. Like if you just jumped up and down, it would move and then stop and then move. It was all weird. Yeah, ideally, I think I would have made like a bus button system so it would like call the elevator to you. Because like if it was multiplayer, that would never work. Probably wouldn't even work anyways because it'd take forever because you'd be waiting on the elevator. If somebody's like trying to use it, and then you got to figure out all the logic. Like if you know there's a player on a different floor that you, and you're both trying to, and it's like fighting you to go to a floor. Touch any stair triggers and hatch will open. See, so close the hatch once the player hits the inside trigger. Oh, and then I put like little console so you know like button to hit on the middle col column. Oh, I think it plays like a hydraulic sound whenever it lifts up. Why are we enabling the sounds? I wonder. I wonder if that has something to do... Oh, I bet that's so, uh... When the enemies, like, come to attack you while you're in the bunker, that they're not triggering the hydraulic sounds, even though the animation isn't playing to kick you out. Basically, it's so the bunker, you know, is player only, and the, since those enemies are based on the player, that they would trigger it, so we're trying to single them out and not have them keep triggering it, because otherwise the hydraulic sound would keep going off and on whenever they get closer in range for touching that trigger. And then here's the checkpoint system to make sure that they've done everything. Go on the next one, anti-air. Level start. Play the off animation, do checks to make sure the player has done everything they're supposed to. Then play on, anima on animation. I'm assuming, let's see, whenever they hit that, whenever that's trigger. Yeah, then we're gonna sound the alarm to uh, indicate that the ship is incoming. Enemy ship. Hide the ship at level start and disable collision when triggered. When hide a ship, set cloaked material, then change to normal material. Place on when ship is hit with missile, show explosion, and emitter, and then remove the ship. Pretty complicated for just for like unhiding a ship, showing it, and then getting it blown up. One of the things whenever I went back to this, I was having problems to see the uh, elevator that you for the initial start has like these different stages it goes through and what it should do is it should stop it shouldn't like play its full animation to lift all the way up but it should be like flat with the floor but for some reason that goes past it's like a timing issue oh yeah i forgot i was freezing the pl or freezing the player so that the so they actually have time while the level's loaded to see that the ship flies away depending on how fast your computer loads yeah lift off activate rockets cinematic mode once players figure out surface lift is offline, trigger the cargo to rise up. Yeah, but see, like since it's broken, it's all the way, it's already up, and then it goes to the bottom floor. Yeah, I was messing around with this a week ago, trying to figure out like how to stop it, and I just gave up. And then here we start our checkpoint system. Wonder why there's speed control. I honestly don't remember. And then once we get down to the bottom, we spawn the SUV. Set it to God mode, touch emitter. Wonder why it has a oh, it has an emitter for the like the same with the crystal i think it has like a little like spark animation whenever it has to fix the exterior lift oh and i forgot it beeps there probably would have been an easier way to do all these scenes they just open and close like the uh the ui elements that uh, tell the player what to do have scv head to armory once player gets weapon pocket so they cannot shoot the sc oh Oh, that's what it was because i think you can keep shooting the scv off course and i think eventually it can get stuck or fall off and I don't think I saw a response system for it. So that's what I did. that's why I did that. Oh, this is where you get your orders. I forgot about that part. Yeah, and this is basically the like the follow. Like if you get too far away, it'll stop and start again. And then it says take take any weapon, but there's only one choice. Oh, I think that's in the control room. It must stop it while the animation plays. Yeah, that's what it is cuz I think it plays like a little like computer sound like it's downloading orders. And then it tells you to go repair the line. 
Yeah, go to the elevator. I yeah, basically follow it. Yeah. I wonder why I'm stopping it. I must, like, stop it from, like, going through the path node so I stop it and I can fix or do whatever it's got to do. So the AI itself must have to hit certain nodes before it begins. So you hit the anti-air, push the button, starts the turret on animation, then after a second plays alarm, tells player to head to bunker. I don't know, the SCV just kind of guides you there, but it doesn't really, like, here's the bunker, this is how you use it. Yeah, that's whenever we unlock the player, uncloak ship, fire the missiles, destroy it, then... That's whenever we realize we s they're enemy they dropped off enemy troops, and they head toward the bunker, head toward the bunker and try to kill the player. The player then has to kill all four enemies. Once they've been killed, the game is over, but the player is free to explore. I'm pretty sure it just like I think they just have a spawner there on the ground. Oh yeah, then after all four of them, then it plays that. There's where we spawn the missile projectile, and we hide the ship. Yeah, I spent uh spent too much time on this. Um, I should have just focused on building the level, maybe doing some light scripting instead of trying to do a whole game. I mean, I feel, most of the time, like, whenever I think level designer, I think, you know, take, you know, somebody, somebody's an environmental artist or whatever, and somebody else makes usually the assets for you. I don't know, it just kind of hindered what I could do. But it, it also took a bunch of time away because I had to look through all the Unreal Tournament assets to be like, oh, what am I going to do for a light? What am I going to do for a ship? Kind of look like an aircraft gun? I don't know. I hope so. Like, what am I going to do about lifts, and what would a bridge kind of look like? You know, if I scale stuff, does it look all weird? Like, I guarantee you, like, this, this thruster, I think, is scaled really small. But also, I didn't have to spend time, you know, modeling it, texturing it, exporting it, making sure that it was alright, making sure the collision was fine. You know, there's a lot of stuff that was kind of already done for me. Oh, I did put collisions off so the player couldn't jump off. That was good. Uh, anyways, I also... Like I said, I spent a lot of time on the kismet, the programming stuff. That took me a lot of time trying to figure out how to do that stuff, like how to how to inform the player and the UI, how to do stuff, which I think I did it the long way, but ultimately it worked. And then there was issues with AI, like trying to get, like I said, there was, you know, some spots on the elevator where there's a path node that it, it goes nowhere. So, yeah, I have to, I had to figure out how to force the AI to go to that. You know, because there will be a platform eventually there that will be on. And I think there's sometimes where, depending on how fast the lift moved, I think the the uh, AI can get stuck. And I think I had to do like a little, it almost like a hop where it'll do a start stop on that node. Just to make sure they don't get stuck. I probably already said this, but also um, I did pretty good at getting, uh, you know, squashing what bugs I could at the end. Or at least keeping track of them and what I thought was important. Another thing is I should have done more like build or release build. For whatever reason, I had problems with it playing. You could only play it in the editor. And I think that was maybe because of the assets. The custom assets I'd used or tried to use. But ultimately didn't end up even working. I also probably should have done more planning. Eventually, I think I did do like a whole like flow chart of the... Of the what I'd call like the game flow or gameplay loop or whatever. You know, start to finish, I think I had, like, all the sounds that were, uh, like, all the ambient sounds that are just continuously going in the loop of that. And then, like, what messages would be the HUD and, you know, what is the, what is the AI doing? Did eventually do that. And it was pretty massive. I should have done, like, more design work, too. Like, just doing sketches of, like, like how does this bunker open? You know, how does the player work? But I guess I was also kind of limited by the assets because I was using, you know, stuff. And I wasn't quite sure how it was going to look to. Because I know I think the top of this is ASBSP yeah, brushes put together. I think the stairs are the same way. Because I think originally I was like, maybe I can find some stuff. Because and originally it was way too complicated. Like There was like locking mechanisms that came down and like locked it shut. You know, to make it feel like it was more sealed. And like stuff folded in. It was like basically like a transformer opening up. I should have also got better about uh, updating like documentation like where was that like in my schedule and quotes because I mean sometimes I would stop and wouldn't work on it for a month or two and then it'd be back and I was like I don't remember what I was doing oh yeah th I, this needs fixed oh yeah that needs fixed you know whenever I could have wrote it down I've been like oh yeah I should have been thinking about this the whole time so I guess if I had to give a takeaway for anything uh my biggest problem was Scheduling was a big problem. Trying to make a whole game instead of a level from what I set out to do. 
I guess I just got kind of excited, but then I got kind of burnt out or overwhelmed by the amount of programming I wanted to do. And then it took so long to learn the Kismet. And then keeping documentation up to date just so, I mean, I couldn't even do it and I was by myself, but like if you had a team and trying to like convey messages, if there was those gaps and I updated something, it'd throw everything off. Because obviously I discussed like why, like, you know, some of the elevator logic would not work in multiplayer. Or like why this, you'd be fighting this bunker, like if there were players running in and out of it, you know, during a multiplayer match, stuff like that. I guess I should have also done more, um, but I guess I considered like release builds, you know, make sure that they're, you know, that they, you can take it and it makes sense how to throw it inside the game. I had to play it without, you know, if somebody doesn't know how to use the editor, then uh, they'd be screwed, or the, the instructions might not make sense, where if I just be like, hey, go to this in the game menu. But yeah, it seems kind of weird doing, I don't know, going back to this after, I think it had been like seven years since I even done the post-mortem moment, which, and I think I did the post-mortem shortly after I finished it, in quotes. <laughs> I don't know, at this point, I guess now I just feel like I'm rambling. But um, hopefully on this website, or on my personal website, portfolio website, whatever you want to call it, there should be a post-mortem PDF file, and there should be, I think, just me going through the game. I don't even think I... there was a voiceover. There was some sound, I think, or just whatever the game sounds were. Uh, there may be, like, a f some final screenshots I did. I think in the post-mortem, though, I put some a few work-in-progress ones if, you know, if you want to see the amount of, I don't know, terror, <laughs> or like, why why did I spend so long on this? But I, I guess you get the idea. Anyways, thanks for watching.